Hey, this is Ashley and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic and with all the K-pop shows that are coming up in the future, I wanted to make an updated ticketing video for you guys to help out with ticketing and just going to these K-pop shows in general. To help you guys out, I am breaking this video down into four distinct sections. Part one will be the prep work, going over all the things that you need to know prior to tickets going on sale. Part two is gonna be going over ticketing sites and ticketing day. Part three will go over resale tickets and post on sale tickets. And then part four will go over anything after getting tickets and day of event tips. So go ahead and strap in. I know that this is going to be a long video, but hopefully it will help you guys out. Part one, prep work. Prior to the tickets going on sale, you will likely have an inkling that your faves are going to be coming, but not always. Always, always, always make sure that you are saving up if you have any inkling or any hope that your favorites will be coming because you never know when exactly it's going to happen. I will give one little tip and that is that tours tend to happen around when some sort of release is happening afterwards. Not always though, so be wary, but if you know that a release is coming soon, be aware that there might also be an announcement of a tour. Be sure that you follow your faves and their companies on Twitter because that is usually where the announcements will hit first. I also suggest that you follow K-pop promoters. These promoters, while not exclusively all K-pop centric promoters, are people that are going to be handling the tours when they come to the US. Some of the major promoters that you'll be dealing with in the US are going to be Subculture Entertainment, K-Pop Me, Powerhouse Live. These are three of the biggest K-Pop promoters in the US. And yes, there are other promoters and I will put some mentions here, but those three are the three biggest ones who have the most frequent tours and handle the most tours here. Another one that you'd also like to keep an eye out for is not a K-Prop promoter, but Live Nation. Sometimes there are tours that go straight through Live Nation and Live Nation will end up handling things. So keep an eye out for them as well. One final promoter that I also would like to mention is My Music Taste. My Music Taste is a little bit different in that they handle the way that they approach bringing in acts and which acts they are going to support in a different way than other promoters. While other promoters keep their dealings behind closed doors, My Music Taste actively engages fans. What they do is you can go on their website and select your favorite group and then select which city you'd like to go. When you do that, you help make a campaign in that particular city. When you make a campaign, it accumulates more and more points the more people do this. There's different ways to accumulate points and one person will have more points than another, but as long as you help make a campaign, you are included with that group. When a campaign reaches a certain level, My Music Taste will go ahead and reach out to that artist's company about potentially having a tour, citing that they have enough interest in that city. Once, it, once that happens, things kind of go out of your hands, but as things progress, it brings the chance that your favorite group will be brought here through My Music Taste. And if they are, My Music Taste does a little thing called presale codes. As long as you've helped make a campaign, you will be included to get a presale code. With those presale codes, like it sounds like, you will get early access to ticket sales, which will help with ticketing. And this is a huge thing. There are a lot of benefits to this. And while usually with most shows with the presale codes, they don't release all tickets. Sometimes all tickets are released during presale. And if it sells out, then you won't have a chance in general sale at all. Once a tour is announced, everybody's main goal is to get as much information as possible. But there are certain items that are more important and you need to make sure that you get 
as soon as you possibly can because it will help with your planning and ticketing. The things that you're gonna be looking for are the venue, the ticket prices, the ticket benefits, the seating chart, and also the on sale ticketing time. These are the most important things and anything else can really wait. Once you find out that information, you'll be ready to jump into the next stage of ticketing and more information will be released over time. But those are the things you want as soon as possible. Let's break down each of those different things. Ticket prices and ticket benefits are obvious. You need to know those so you know what you're getting. If you want to get high touch, you need to know how much that is going to cost. If you don't even know if there will be a high touch or a photo op, you need to know that as well. If you have a budget or you would like to go to multiple shows, you may not be able to purchase the highest tier ticket. And if you don't know what that costs or what comes with it, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to plan what you are going to do with this particular tour or even just your single stop. Prices, benefits, they're important for the money wise. One of the other more important things is the venue. You need the venue so you know where it's going to be and that influences where you're going to be staying and potential travel. So you need the venues. Seating charts are important for knowing how long you will need to be in a city. There are two main kinds of seating when it comes to these seating charts, regardless of where you're positioned. There is standing seating and there is general admission. With assigned seatings, you can stroll up to the venue minutes before the show starts, walk into that first row seat that you somehow procured, and still be good. The same cannot be said with GA. GA means that you are let into the venue in the order that you are in line, which oftentimes with these events means that you're going to need to camp out. I myself have camped out overnight a number of times, but I have also arrived to GA events later in the day. When that happens, I am inevitably further away from the stage. If you are deciding that you are going to camp out, you're going to need to add additional time to your travel, both before and likely after. When you camp out, it is exhausting, and I highly recommend that you give yourself at least eight hours of buffer time on either end. This is because if when you go into the event, you're going to need some time to prepare to go camp out. Maybe you don't need a full eight hours, but if you're going to be camping eight hours before a show, you need to be there. And if you're gonna be camping even longer, you need to extend that time even more. Now, I, the reason I say you also need time after is that if you've camped out, you will be tired after the show. I know this from experience. I once camped out for a show, got there at like two in the morning, waited all day long, went to the show, and then I had to make another three hour drive back home. That was rough trying to do that immediately after, and I highly do not recommend this. Take the time, rest up for a few hours at least before you have to make any sort of drive or major travel. So just, just, just a heads up. It can be rough and exhausting when you decide to camp out. Now, camping out can be made easier when you do this with friends. You can switch off, give yourself time to rest, and maybe you won't need as much buffer time. But if you're alone, you can still make friends with people in line. Obviously, you're still fighting for yourself, but it is nice to make friends. And sometimes those friends are lasting. At this point in time, I find that it is a good idea to book lodging and potentially travel. Hotels around a venue can book up extremely quickly. Usually with a hotel, you will be able to make a reservation and not pay for that reservation until you actually get there. Usually you'll need to leave a cart number though, and some hotels may require that you pay the first night, but many times you just need to leave a card number and you can get reserve your hotel room, which is really beneficial if you'd like to stay close and you're worried about potential bookings around where you're trying to stay going up in price. 
If you're gonna be staying at an Airbnb, then you would have to pay ahead of time. However, usually with an Airbnb, it's going to be a 100% refund as long as you do it a certain amount of time ahead. So even if things go wrong, you should still have time to cancel your lodging with plenty of time to not lose any money. So booking lodging is usually a good idea. Travel, on the other hand, is something that can be hit or miss as to whether you should book travel so early. If you know 100% that you are going to go to that show, no matter what, whether you get tickets on sale or through resale, you will be going. Go ahead, book your travel as soon as the prices are just right. Depending on how far the show out may be, that might be right now. It could be in a few weeks. It could have been yesterday. So booking, knowing if you need to book travel right away, if you're definitely going to go, is important. If, however, you maybe aren't gonna go to the show if you don't pull your tickets and you don't wanna do resale, you may want to wait on actually booking travel. Trying to refund travel is a lot more difficult. But the hotels, usually you can get by without having to worry about losing money on booking that. Usually, watch what you are booking because there are situations where you might be charged a fee. And then finally, you need the on-sale date for obvious reasons. If you don't know when things go on sale, how are you gonna buy your ticket? Part two, ticketing. So now you know when tickets are going on sale and the price range. It's now time to understand how ticketing works. When you are going to an event, you are going to a venue. Completely take out whatever artist you're going to see. You are going to spend your time at a location. And that location has created a partnership with some sort of ticketing vendor. That ticketing vendor is tied to that venue. So knowing what venue you are going to be going to will tell you what ticketing service you will be using. Common ticket vendors include Ticketmaster and Live Nation, which have merged into one company, or Axis. There are many, many, many other ticketing vendors that are much smaller, but those are the two slash three biggest ones out there. Also, on occasion, some promoters do sell tickets directly through them, and that is because they've set up deals with the actual venues and the actual ticketing sites to sell some directly through their portal instead. The first thing that I recommend that you do is set up a login on the ticketing vendor's site. If you also have the ability to enter your payment information ahead of time, that will th speed things up when it comes to checkout. Ticketmaster is one of the biggest ticking, ticket selling sites, and after a merger with Live Nation, they are essentially the same company under two different names. Ticketmaster functions with a first come, first serve mentality. The better internet that you have, the better. I'll also note that their phone app yields pretty good results too if you're struggling. Many times I can pull a ticket on the phone app and not on the computer. That said, when ticketing on sale comes, you need to be ready. If there is no waiting room, when ticket on sale begins, you can go and purchase your ticket. There is a countdown timer so you can sit on the page and wait for it to switch over for you to get tickets. Some people suggest that you refresh the page right as it's about to change over. I myself have noticed no discernible differences. If anything, my results have tended to be worse when I have tried that. So just use that as a warning. Also, Ticketmaster will sometimes warn using multiple browsers within the same machine. It can cause Ticketmaster to lock up and potentially lock you out. Generally, what I will do is I will use multiple devices rather than multiple windows. When you first log in, it will ask you how many tickets you want and what type of ticket you want. Set the number that you need, and if you're going for the best tickets you can possibly grab, just set it to best available and just go for it. But if you are looking for a specific tier, especially if it is a lower tier, this doesn't always work with higher tiers, but the lower tiers, the cheaper tickets, Usually, it will benefit you to actually select the tier that you want. When you do this, it usually will bypass everybody else trying to fight for the top. 
and we'll send you right to the lower tickets and you can generally get a ticket better and easier. Although this is not a guarantee depending on the kind of fight you're dealing with. Depending on the event, there may be a pre-queue set up prior to on sale. This pre-queue will generally open up a half hour before ticket on sale, but I re recommend getting there even a little bit earlier just to check. When the pre-queue opens up, as soon as it becomes available, you want to join that pre-queue because what it does is it stacks you right into a queue that is already starting to form, which means once on sale starts, the people at the front of the pre-queue will have first access, while people that jump in later will be pushed to the end. So joining the pre-queue will benefit you. Access is the other main site. And while sometimes they do have direct sales and they do not open what they call a waiting room, then you would immediately go in and just buy tickets as soon as on sale starts. However, with the waiting room, the waiting room is different than Ticketmaster's pre-queue. With the, with the pre-queue, you are put in an exact order. With Access's wait room, you are just lumped in. When on sale starts in that waiting room, you are given a, and assigned a random number. So two people could have logged in at the exact same time and end up, one ends up getting very in very early and one ends up getting in very late. On the same token, somebody who joined the waiting room really early can end up getting pushed way later than somebody who joined the waiting room much later. So there's no guarantee with the access waiting room because it is random. It's really down to luck. Other than that, be prepared. If you can get people to help you, do it. The more people that are trying to get tickets for you at one time, the easier things can be because you never know who will manage to pull the tickets. Part three, resale and post on sale ticketing. So maybe things didn't work out as you hoped and now you have to resort to resale. It is not the end of the world. In case you don't know much about resale, resale is the process of buying a ticket from somebody else. With resale, you can buy a ticket directly from a person. You can buy it through a third party intermediary, or you can buy it through the actual ticketing website. Let's start with buying from a person. This is usually how you'll get the cheapest resale ticket. When you're buying direct from a person, you're not going to have to worry about any additional fees and you're going to be able to actually communicate with them directly and potentially negotiate a lower price. Don't go in to a resale situation trying to haggle somebody down. But if you think that their price is really high and you mention your potential price, that is not necessarily a bad thing. But don't do too much haggling because you don't know what the person on the other end ended up purchasing things for either. When you're purchasing from a person directly, you can do this through groups on Facebook, on Twitter, all sorts of places can notify you of where people are reselling these tickets. However, this is also one of the easiest ways for scammers to succeed. With this method, essentially they are able to collect money from you and potentially not send you the ticket. I highly suggest that if you are purchasing a ticket that you always use goods and services. When you do this, whatever price is set, unless they've mentioned that it includes a goods and services price, add on the cost of goods and services through PayPal. If you're not paying through PayPal and they are requesting payment through a different manner, what I would suggest that you do is make sure whether this is contacting whichever company that they're asking for payment through or your bank that you would be able to have some sort of insurance or some sort of like buyer protection because if something does go wrong you have to be able to get your money back otherwise you're screwed and this is how scammers thrive. If your gut says don't do it just don't. The other 
method is buying through a third party intermediary like StubHub or Vivid Seats. I've purchased tickets through these guys and usually they will come with some sort of insurance. And while there are other sellers, Vivid Seats and StubHub are the two that I know of and I do know that both of them have a policy where if the ticket that you purchased through them ends up being fake and you cannot get what you were what you were said to be getting then what they will do is they will either try to get you an equivalent ticket or you will be refunded so that way you have some sort of assurance that you will either try to get another ticket or you'll get your money back at the very least. Using these sites like this, yes, things can still technically be scammed by people who will enter false information, but because of these sites insurance policies, you generally will still be covered if something goes wrong, usually. Finally, there are the actual ticket sellers that will allow to post resale tickets like Access and Ticketmaster. Once a person purchases a ticket, Usually a person will have the ability to trade tickets. However, they also are able to sell tickets through the actual ticketing sites. Similar to like StubHub and Vivid Seats, Access and Ticketmaster, when they resell, those ticket prices are inflated because that's how they make their money. So whatever price is listed is usually going to be higher than if you were to buy something direct from a person because there are additional fees that get tacked on both for the seller and for the buyer. One of the benefits of going through Access or Ticketmaster is that the tickets are verified. So there's no way that you're gonna be getting a fake ticket through them because they are their official tickets that are then just repurposed and re-verified for your use. If you choose not to buy resale tickets and don't mind waiting, Sometimes, depending on the way that the tickets were sold and set up, more seats are sometimes opened up for sale. And if you really, really don't mind waiting or pushing it close, you can wait until the day of when the box, off box office opens. When the box office opens on day of, any tickets that promoters aren't using and reserving, any seats that like might be for giveaways from radio stations or things like that, or tickets that are supposed to be claimed for family members or other people, tickets that have been blocked off will then sometimes be released for people to buy. Those will generally be released day of, so you would have to keep your eyes out day of if you're willing to wait that long. It is a potential option, but there is no guarantee. I've been to shows where no tickets open up, but I've been to shows where tickets do. Part four, day of tips. Now that you've got your tickets, it's time for some day of tips to get you through the big event. By now you should have booked your tickets. You should already most likely be in your city and have your travel all done. But the question still arises, when should you get to the venue? And let me tell you, that is varied depending on whether you're seated, standing, or if you have to buy merch. So let's break this down a little. For seated shows, I personally recommend not getting there until about a half an hour before the doors open or before there's any sort of engagement you need to do. Half an hour before, you can get any banners that you might want before the show or start to talk to some people in line. For a standing show, you're most likely going to be getting there hours early. Even if you're not camping, you're still going to want to be there early because there will be people who did camp. If you're a P1 or P2, those are the closest to the stage generally, and that means that there's going to be competition for that front. The earlier that you're there, the better spot you're going to get. Many people will start lining up for these shows the night before, but at the very least, you're going to see people that are straggling in wee early hours of the morning. Please be aware that oftentimes for most shows, there is an official lineup start time, but that being said, there's usually an unofficial line that will be formed sometimes completely off premises, but still very close to where the official line will begin. And there is some contention about people that should wait until this lineup starts. However, I have found that shows where they do not honor the lines that have been formed, 
tend to be more messy, people are more angry, and there's a lot more frustration. So generally, respecting the line is a good thing and tends to help out with orderly and keeping everybody happy at the show. That said, I understand that not everybody can line up and not everybody's situation is the same. And unfortunately, that just is the way it is. Some people are able to get away early. Some people are not. Nobody should be slighted or demeaned because they have the time and the desire to wait when other people can't. It's not entirely their fault. As long as there's no issues that are being caused, it's generally something that usually causes more order than disorder. As for what you need to bring to a concert, what you want to bring is variable. Generally, you want to have your light stick and you can usually bring like your phone and your keys and your wallet, things like that. Some shows, many shows, you can bring a point and shoot with no retractable, like no, no de detachable lenses. Usually will be allowed, but not always. So make sure that you do check that prior to the show. What you can bring though also varies because some places will allow you to bring a bag, a small bag or a purse, other places will not. I've been to venues where you can only have a clear bag of a certain size. I have been to venues where you can bring a whole backpack and it doesn't matter. However, I will say that if you are in GA or you just wanna get through the line, I recommend that you bring as little as possible. Bring your phone, bring your light stick, bring your wallet and your keys and keep everything else away. If you do really need to bring things and need to have things in a bag, if you can condense it and keep it in a clear bag, that will help you move through security faster. When you have a clear bag, they don't have to spend time poking and rummaging through it to make sure that you're good to go. So it will go faster if you do have to bring a bag to bring a clear one. And finally, let's talk about the merch. Merch is going to be handled differently everywhere. Some shows will have absolutely no merch. Some shows will have you buy merch ahead of time and pick it up at the show. Some will have you buy it ahead of time and pick it up well before the show, before doors open. Sometimes the merch will only be sold once you get inside the doors, once you enter the venue for the show. Other times, merch will only be sold prior to the short show and doors opening. So the way merch is going to be sold is really going to be variable. And while this can affect your travel time, usually information about merch will be set up ahead of time so you can find out what you'll need to be doing prior to the show. But it is really different each time. And I wish I could tell you that there's one consistent or common route, but there really isn't. And that is everything I wanted to go over. I'm sure that there are other things that I haven't mentioned here. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I do have a previous older video, which you can go check out as well. There might be some more information you can grab there. And yeah, I just wanted to help break this down and it was long, but there's a lot of information when it comes to ticketing. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.